it's important to have a good idea of where we're going before we just jump in and start configuring things for a lab environment. So in this video, you and I get to take a look at the big picture regarding networks, hypervisors, software that's involved, so we can have a really clear idea of where we're going as we're building this lab. So let's use this as our backdrop. And if we're building a lab for Firepower and we're gonna use a single ESXi host, some of the software we're going to need is VMware's ESXi software. Now they have a free version for individuals. You can download it. It's simply software that gets installed on a computer as a type one hypervisor. And then inside of that one physical computer with ESXi, we then create and emulate the entire environment. So as far as some of the software required, we'll need ESXi. And as far as ESXi goes, you can either download a trial or an eval version, or you can register yourself for a free version of ESXi. They'll give you a single license for a server that you can then run forever. And as far as running that on a computer, you'd want to make sure that that computer supports the running of ESXi. So the current flavor of ESXi as of this recording is 7.x. And so whatever hardware you're planning to run this on, you'd want to make sure that's compatible with 7.x. And we have separate videos here at CBT Nuggets about the basic deployment of a single ESXi host. You can check those out if you need details on installing ESXi on a dedicated computer for that purpose. And in the world of ESXi, they refer to these often as a host, an ESXi host. That's a computer that's running the ESXi software, the hypervisor software that's going to support the whole environment. And as far as the demos that I'm going to be setting up here and working with, I currently have a host here. It's a blade server. I got it used and it has 128 gigs of RAM. Now you don't, you don't have to have that much. You don't have to have 128 gigs, but the more RAM you have, the more resources you can give RAM wise to all of these virtual machines. Also, as far as software goes, we'll also need the FMC. So the FMC, it's an acronym. If you're brand new to it, that's the acronym for Firepower Management Center. Think of it as Control Central, where we log into the Firepower Management Center, and then the Firepower Management Center, based on what we tell it to do there, will then communicate with the, the firewalls and actually implement the commands. And these firewalls are called FTDs, which is an acronym for Firepower Threat Defense. And they are the next generation firewall and IPS slash IDS solution from Cisco Systems. So today for current implementations, when we think of Firepower, we're thinking of FTDs, that's the actual firewalls themselves, and the FMC, which is our management center that allows us to manage all of those firewalls. And so this software as well, you can register and request an eval from Cisco. And when we deploy the FMC and the FTD, they automatically give us the option for an eval period when they're first installed, which is absolutely perfect for a lab environment. So the ESXi host software, we can get an eval of that. We can get evals of FMC and FTD. Everything over here is going to be running as a VM. So the FTDs are going to be running as a VM on the ESXi host. The Firepower Management Center is going to be running as a VM on the ESXi host. And the networking that we see here on the screen is all going to be provided inside of the ESXi host. And have no fear, I'll walk you through each and every step of getting that set up exactly right as well. Another element that might be nice but not required is some version of Windows Server, which also can be run as a virtual machine in the ESXi hypervisor. And Windows Server, we could use that for things like Active Directory if we want to integrate with Active Directory for user identification, or if we want to use an NTP server. The Windows Server can do that, or it can do DHCP, or NTP, and other features as well. Then also in our environment, we're going to want to have some VMs that we can pop in on these sites. So Site 3 and Site 4 and the Headquarters site. And that way we can test and verify functionality with traffic that's actually going through or being forced through or sent through the Firepower Threat Defense appliances. And those also would be virtual machines all living inside the ESXi host. And so these virtual machines could be like Linux, they could be Windows, whatever we want to deploy there is great. And ideally we want something that we can use to send traffic through so we can verify our firewalls. All right, so let me clean that up a little bit and let's talk about networking. Regarding networking at the headquarter location, we're gonna use 10.1.0.0 as the IP addressing space with the 24-bit mask. At site three, we'll use 10.3.0 and at site four, we'll use 10.4.0. Also, for these three FTDs I have on the screen here, FTD1 will have the last octet of its IP address always end in .11. And the benefit of that is that whenever we see .11, we'll know it's associated with this FTD, this Firepower Threat Defense device. And similarly, FTD-3 will have the last octet of .13, and FTD-4 will have the last octet of .14. And for the simulated lab internet, I'm going to use this address space 23.1.2.0 with the 24-bit mask. 
and I'll have the default gateway for the pseudo internet here as being dot one. So that way, whenever we see the 23.1.2 network, we'll just say, oh yeah, that's the internet or the pseudo internet inside of our lab environment. Now to manage all the FTDs, we are gonna use the FMC, the Firepower Management Center, and it's a VM and it's gonna have the IP address of dot 10. And all of these devices in the lab, I'd like to, for simplicity, go ahead and connect them to a management network. So the Firepower Management Center on its interface, the dot 10 will be connected to the management network, which is my home office network. That's the network that I'm currently sitting at. And the benefit of that is that if our PC is sitting on the same network, we can then use our browser to open up sessions with those FTDs if we need to, or to the Firepower Management Center, or do other local configuration and management because our PC right here is on the 192.168.1 network. So in your home network environment, if your primary address space is 172.16.1, uh, and then with a 24-bit mask, for example, use that as your management network. And that way it'll be easier to get from your PC to any of the devices that we're deploying inside the ESXi host because logically the management interface for all those devices is gonna be on your same common network that your computer is on right now. So here on the FTD appliances, I have represented an M there for this management interface connected to the management network. And I'll walk you through that as we configure the ESXi host to support all this as well. And one other element I'd like to talk about for a moment as far as our design, so let's say we have a, a device here, a, a client device, a virtual machine that is using the firepower threat defense as its default gateway, using dot eleven as the default gateway, and then we're doing that and we're sending traffic out to the pseudo internet. It would also be great for the benefit of testing and working with our firepower is to have real internet connectivity as well. So in addition, in the lab environment, we're also going to introduce another little virtual router. It's running as a VM, and it'll have Ethernet one that's connected to the twenty three network. And then I'll have Ethernet zero, which is then connected to another network, which then leads off to the real internet. And so right here, we can do things like PAT, network address translation, as well as routing, so that if we give this router the IP address of dot one on the 2312 network, then FTD one, FTD three, FTD four, if we tell each one of those devices that their default gateway is using dot one on the 23.1.2 network, and we're doing PAT here at this little virtualized router, then these firepower threat defense appliances can get access to the live real internet and a PC like this one over here, as it goes through address translation and inspection and so forth, can actually go out also to the live internet. And that gives us a perfect lab environment to practice with things like URL filtering, reputation filtering, IDS, IPS functionality, as well as next generation application layer inspection. So that, my friend, is our game plan. And we'll come back to this topology and look at it as we reference and build the pieces. So in the next video, we'll take a look at those exact pieces for an ESXi host to support our lab environment. I'll see you in that next video in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.